Hello, this is Wade with Subspace Games. Uh, just here to do a follow-up video about the Space Navigator and getting it to work in Blender 2.5. Um, so the first video was just kind of going over the software and how to get it, um, and then just some basics of the setup. This time um, I had a comment, asked, somebody was asking me to demonstrate uh, how you can use it within Blender um, and how well it will work. Um, I never used it before in the previous version. Uh, I would imagine that the native functionality of being able to use the mouse and the space navi navigator at the same time would be great. Um, it's pretty usable the way it is right now. There's just a few things that I had to modify. So first, um, first what I did is I came into File and then User Preferences. And for the interface, I went ahead and turned off Zoom to Mouse Position. It seemed to work a little bit better for me. Um, I guess this is kind of personal preference, but uh, the mouse and the space navigator seem to, to conflict a little bit. And so if you're using the uh, moving the mouse around to try and zoom in, um, and sometimes it just doesn't work out right. So I turned that off. And then on the input, I went ahead and uh, switched the continuous grab on. And if you're not familiar with what that does, it basically keeps your cursor uh, within the 3D view uh, as you're scaling or moving the mouse to do some scaling or panning or whatever. Um, it keeps the, the cursor, and rather than going off the edge of the screen, it will come back over onto the other side. It just wraps around. Uh, it seemed to be pretty important with using the Space Navigator. That way you could continue to rotate or, or do whatever you needed. You didn't have to worry about the, the arrow going to the edge of the screen and stopping. So once I had those things in place, um, worked pretty well. Um, I just went into the um, basic setup. If you right-click on the little icon and go to the open the GUI, you have the ability to set up profiles uh, based on the executable. Um, I went ahead and set up one for Blender. Just went through and, and um, you know bound some of the the basic stuff to um, some of the panning and rotation and all that. It works pretty good, uh, as you can see over here in, in Blender. I'm able to rotate. It'll just keep rotating. You'll see that's the continuous grab working, where the the cursor just goes right off the edge of the screen, wraps around. Um, so it is emulating the mouse movement. So you'll notice here I'm going to start moving with the Space Navigator, and then I'm going to start using the mouse. You'll see how it jumps around. So uh, you you will want to do one or the other at the same time, or at, you know. You want to do them at different times. You don't want to have your mouse on uh, your hand on the mouse and on the space navigator and trying to do um, something with both. So let me jump in and I'm going to do some basic modeling here. Um, I am definitely not a pro at Blender. Um, I'm learning this. I'm definitely not a pro at the space navigator. I've only had it for a few days, but we'll see if we can just whip out some uh, simple stuff real quick. So we'll do Shift A to get a cube in there. We'll tab to go into edit mode. Uh, I like to work in solid view. It's a little bit easier for me. And then let's um, let's go ahead and subdivide a few times. And we will zoom in here. Um, again, I'm doing all of the um, the navigation, all the panning and rotation, everything is being done but with the Space Navigator. Um, and let's go to face mode. I'm going to select the series of faces here. Let's rotate around, we'll grab the other side. If you'll see it when it's kind of jerky, that's me forgetting to take my hand off the mouse. Um, well, that's not a very good view. Let's rotate a little bit more. There we go. Um, and so you definitely do want to to be careful with that. Otherwise, you'll end up with, like I said, with some strange results trying to rotate around and everything. Just like these faces. Let's get a little bit of an angle there. I'm just hitting S for scale. Just scaling those faces in. Hit A to release the currently selected faces. Ooh, let's zoom out a little bit there. Oops, don't want that one. Scale that in. Alright, so again, just doing a basic shape. Um, mainly just to show you how easily you can move around uh, using the Space Navigator. I'm going to hit E to extrude. We'll just extrude some of these faces out just to make it interesting. E, extrude that out. 
rotate, zoom, Oop, zoom out a little bit there. So as you can see, I, I'm pretty new with Blender um, and with the Space Navigator, but in a very short amount of time, um, I've been able to um, pick up the Space Navigator and get it to work for me. It's, it's actually made me feel a lot more at home in Blender. So it allows me to really focus on learning the stuff that I need to know rather than struggling with navigation. It's just very intuitive. Um, the one thing I would say is, you know, you have the options from within the 3D connection. Um, this one's been big, the reverse. So if I ever found that um, it was moving in an opposite direction, if I was trying to pan left or right and it moved in the opposite direction than what I was expecting, you hit the reverse button or the reverse check mark and it'll fix that for you. So it did take me a little bit of time to just make sure that everything felt real natural. Um, I adjusted the speed a little bit on the threshold that just kind of keeps, um, it's not, it makes it so it's not so sensitive, sensitive if you move the threshold up a bit. Um, it's just what felt natural to me. So you just go in and play around with that. But as you can see, I was just able to, you know, kind of knock something out here, not really knowing what I was doing um, and render it up. It's kind of a cool looking little shape there. Um, but before when I was learning Blender, I had a, a lot of trouble just trying to get around and now it's just very natural. I mean, I can, I can get anywhere. I can pan, zoom, do whatever. It's just very, very easy. The other thing I like about this software is, um, I think I mentioned in the first one that I am using, um, a 3d engine called Shiva. Um, I do have a profile stored for Shiva as well, and this the software will seamlessly switch between the two. So as you notice, if I bring up a scene here in Shiva, um, Shiva doesn't seem to recognize it as well as Blender does when you try to do the mouse emulation. It just doesn't, sometimes it doesn't grab. But this is a completely different setup than what I was just using for Blender, and yet you know, I'm able to uh, move around in here, and then if I switch back to Blender, um, I still have my profile set up. So it's it's very robust in that sense that uh, you can switch from program to program, and it's automatically going to pick up your settings. So I encourage you to go grab it, um, use it. I know that the Blender uh, developers are are working hard on a, a lot of features within Blender. I give them credit for just a tremendous amount of work that they've been able to do. Um, you know, I, I, I love Blender. It's um, a fantastic program. I know that they'll get to it eventually, but for now, at least there's this um, workaround that seems to, to be good. Um, I mean, I'm really enjoying using it. So I wish you all the luck with that, and, um, you know, go download it and give it a try.